Welcome to St. Andrew's Presbyterian Church in Victoria, British Columbia. King David said in the 116th Psalm, I love the Lord because he listened to me, listened as I begged for mercy. It is God who makes things right. During Lent, God's deepest desire is to make things right in our hearts and in our minds. During this worship, God joins with us in that deep desire. Repeatedly, we encounter those persons who have lost hope. We find them lacking confidence and purpose. Sometimes we are these people and confess our discontent and distraction. We are unsure and afraid. We have tried and failed and too often have chosen to give up. But God is not afraid. Where we find despair, God restores life and meaning. Jesus is not afraid. When we see a lost cause, Jesus sees a new beginning. Let us be open to God's surprises and awaken to God's presence among us. praying together. God of light, as our world is surrounded with the pain and panic of the known and unknown, remind us what we learned so long ago, that your light came into the world and yet the world's darkness, our darkness, has never been able to extinguish that light. Help us to believe and to trust that for ourselves for one another, and for our world. Amen. Prayer of Confession Forgiving God, surely you hear our cries of worry and our murmured complaining. Your unwavering compassion for your people defies our understanding. Yet, despite your unending goodness, we grumble. Rather than rejoice in your grace to us, we resent that you extend kindness to others. Instead of gratitude for your mercy, we question why you would embrace those we think undeserving. Forgive us for judging others and begrudging your generosity. We thank you for yet again hearing our cries and providing abundantly more than we can ever ask or imagine. In your grace we pray. Amen. Declaration of Forgiveness This is the good news. There is no ranking in God's kingdom. God graces everyone with the same gifts. Mercy, restoration, new life. God has kept the covenant. We have been forgiven and made new people. Thanks be to God. Amen.
scripture reading is Exodus chapter 16, verses 2 to 15. The whole congregation of the Israelites complained against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. The Israelites said to them, If only we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt, when we sat by the flesh pots and ate our fill of bread, for you have brought us out into this wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. Then the Lord said to Moses, I am going to rain bread from heaven for you, and each day the people shall go out and gather enough for that day. In that way I will test them whether they will follow my instruction or not. On the sixth day, when they prepared what they were to bring in, it will be twice as much as they gather on other days. So Moses and Aaron said to all the Israelites, In the evening you shall know that it was the Lord who brought you out of the land of Egypt. And in the morning you shall see the glory of the Lord, because he has heard your complaining against the Lord. For what are we that you complain against us? And Moses said, When the Lord gives you meat to eat in the evening and your fill of bread in the morning... Because the Lord has heard the complaining that you utter against him, what are we? Your complaining is not against us, but against the Lord. Then Moses said to Aaron, Say to the whole congregation of the Israelites, Draw near to the Lord, for he has heard your complaining. And as Aaron spoke to the whole congregation of the Israelites, they looked toward the wilderness, and the glory of the Lord appeared in a cloud. The Lord spoke to Moses and said, I have heard the complaining of the Israelites. Say to them, At twilight you shall eat meat, and in the morning you shall have your fill of bread. Then you shall know that I am the Lord your God. In the evening quails came up and covered the camp, and in the morning there was a layer of dew around the camp. When the layer of dew lifted, there on the surface of the wilderness was a fine flaky substance, as fine as frost on the ground. When the Israelites saw it, they said to one another, What is it? For they did not know what it was. Moses said to them, It is the bread that the Lord has given you to eat. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second scripture of the morning continues the reading from Exodus, the 16th chapter, beginning with verse 16. This is what the Lord has commanded. Gather of it, every man of you, as much as he can eat. You shall take an omer apiece, according to the number of the persons whom each of you has in his tent. And the people of Israel did so. They gathered some more, some less. And when they measured it with an omer, he that gathered much had nothing over, and he that gathered little had no lack. Each gathered according to what he could eat. And Moses said to them, Let no man leave any of it till the morning. But they did not listen to Moses. Some left part of it till the morning, and it bred worms and became foul. And Moses was angry with them. Morning by morning they gathered it, each as much as he could eat. But when the sun grew hot, it melted. On the sixth day, they gathered twice as much bread, two omers apiece. And when all the leaders of the congregation came and told Moses, he said to them, this is what the Lord has commanded. Tomorrow is a day of solemn rest, a holy Sabbath to the Lord. Bake what you will bake, and boil what you will boil, boil, and all that is left over lay by, so to be kept until the morning. The word of the Lord. 
Thanks be to God. Good morning. Welcome to this fourth Sunday of Lent. I recently read an excerpt from the book, What's in a Phrase, entitled Eat the Manna by religious author Marilyn Chandler McIntyre. She describes being asked to write her spiritual autobiography in six words. She recalls, the church was quiet, pencils scratching. In the silence, six words came. Perfect, in a way, they addressed my recurrent anxieties about saving and spending, keeping and letting go, prudent stewardship, and the practice of generosity. My words... Eat the manna, more will come. McIntyre says that the story of manna in the wilderness is a story about how grace often comes in odd, unsettling, barely recognizable ways. The early Israelites were only a month into their journey when they realized that moving from exiled to the promised land was going to be filled with struggle. The in-between experience of being in the wilderness 
made them question everything in their lives. Do you remember how wonderful it was when we were in Egypt? We asked the same kinds of questions. Do you remember when our children were little? Do you remember the days before the pandemic? We attach those memories to joy and hope, no matter what the reality is. During the Israelites' first days in the wilderness, the sun grew hot. Their water pouches were running low, and their stomachs were rumbling. In the gathering, they reminisced. Do you remember when we were back in Egypt? We always had enough to eat, forgetting the slave labor that it took to provide what they ate. Do you remember our happy wedding celebrations, forgetting the forced marriages that they were made to tolerate? They began to mumble and complain. We are going to die out here because of all the provisions we no longer have. It's all Moses and Aaron's fault. This is a familiar pattern. Walter Brueggemann warns that we have, without thinking, agreed to endless anxiety because we approach our lives from a mentality of scarcity. We do not have enough yet. We have not done enough. We are invited to an alternative way of living where God meets our needs. Without fanfare, God didn't respond to the Israelites grumbling and complaining. He simply began to supply their needs. Manna was readily available. Manhu is the Hebrew word for what is it? The Israelites had never before received bread as a free gift they couldn't control, predict, plan for, or own. Their daily provision was a strange, flaky substance that had to be gathered in the morning before it melted in the sun. They had to learn to gather, prepare, and to eat the manna. Brueggemann teaches that the book of, Ex book of Exodus records the tension between the, litur the liturgy of generosity and the myth of scarcity. First, everybody had enough. The Lord said, in the morning, you shall have your fill of bread. Then you shall know that I, the Lord your God, but Israel, had learned to believe in scarcity in Egypt. The people had started to hoard the bread, and it turned sour and rotted. The lesson is that we cannot store up God's generosity. God created a world of great abundance. If we share, there is enough for all. Marilyn McIntyre remembered her mother who lived most of her life on the edge of poverty, but she was rich in trust and stories about just the right amount of food, money, or help showing up just when it was needed. She was careful about making the dollars stretch to the end of the month but she also knew when to eat the manna. She knew that some things, most things, are to be used, enjoyed, and shared rather than stored. Marilyn ends her story. It takes time, I find, to recognize that we have what we need, 
when our notion of what we need is confined by habit and expectation. We may not have the money to replace an appliance, but perhaps we have a neighbor who can fix it. We may not have our closest friends nearby when sorrow strikes, but someone may surface from the margins of our lives with a big heart and a listening ear. Solutions may come from unexpected sources. The answer to many prayers, reinforced with every celebration of the Eucharist, is simply a reminder, you have what you need, take it, eat it, there will be more. When we are willing to look at everything that comes to us as gift from God, there will be no end to the manna. May it be so. Amen. We began this worship with thanksgiving, and now we are called into the world with that same thanksgiving. Give thanks to God whose love secures us as we go. Allow thanksgiving to deepen the joys we experience. Let thanksgiving transcend the pains you may suffer. Let thanksgiving sweeten the duties you must perform. Let thanksgiving underpin even the griefs you have to endure. Give thanks to God whose love secures us as we go. And may the strength of the Redeemer, the love of the Creator, and the fellowship of the Counselor be with you now and always. Amen.